U.S. Marshals are looking for a fugitive on the run for more than 20 years now. John Rufo was convicted of a $350 million bank fraud scheme in 1998. The computer salesman from Brooklyn was sentenced to 17 and a half years in prison. But right before he was supposed to start serving his time, he hit the road, went on the run, and now he may have been spotted at a Dodgers game. The feds have released surveillance photos of Rufo stopping at an ATM on the day he was supposed to report to prison in New Jersey. Those are the last known photos of him. That same day, Rufo's rented Ford Taurus was found in a parking lot at JFK Airport in New York. Rufo is one of the Marshall's 15 most wanted fugitives. Because Rufo had strong international ties and Marshalls think he could be living overseas, the wanted poster has been translated into seven languages. But get this, Rupo may have been spotted right here in the U.S. His cousin, who lives in New Hampshire, was watching the Boston Red Sox play the Los Angeles Dodgers on TV in 2016. Good seats, too. He saw a guy who resembled Rufo sitting right behind home plate at Dodger Stadium. I mean, they're expensive tickets. The guy's got money. Investigators say someone else bought the ticket and gave it away. So the marshals have not been able to confirm if that guy is actually Rufo. This is a picture of the man at the game next to an age progression photo of Rufo from the U.S. Marshals. And so the manhunt continues. With me now is Judd Burstein, who represented Rufo after his arrest. Thank you so much for taking the time. We appreciate it. All right, so to get, give us a little history here. How did he get out? on bail in the first place, knowing that he are bond, that he had a potential to be a flight risk? Well, he was on bail right from the start with a monitor. I, when I got him out of um, prison at the beginning of the case, and he showed up for every court appearance. And when I negotiated his plea deal, one of the things I required was, was that he would have the right to a direct surrender, which means that instead of them hauling him off into prison after he's sentenced, he gets to directly surrender to the institution. And the reason why I would do that was if you get brought into a prison after a federal conviction, you can spend two weeks on a bus going back around the country until you get to your designated institution. There was nothing very and were you, unusual about that. Were you, I assume you were stunned when he fled? Yeah, of course I was. I was, I was actually, yeah. um, I was outraged because I had managed to get him out on bail for a fraction of the amount that they wanted because he was putting up his mother's and I believe his aunt's house and uh, a cousin's house. And I argued to the prosecutors that that was better than a $20 million bond because nobody runs off and leaves their mother and their wife and their aunt homeless. Um, so I was shocked and also pretty outraged that, that it happened. And is that what happened? Did they all lose yes. their homes because of this? They, they, they were all thrown out of their homes. It's wow. tragedy. And so, I mean, I, I find it amazing that, you know, this happened in 1998. We've got all sorts of technological advances now um, in terms of facial recognition, et cetera, um, that they haven't been able to find him up to this point. Aren't you surprised? Well, I mean, a guy who can um, go into, uh, you know, a consortium of banks and tell them that uh, we're doing a deal for a secret government project involving Philip Morris and it's so secret, you need to lend us $350 million and we can't even give you the serial numbers on the, uh, you know, on the computers that, that we're buying that you're supposedly secured by. If a guy who can accomplish that and get $350 million from a bank I suspect that running away and be keeping, uh, you know, and not being caught is a lot easier for him. I'm, I'm just about out of time here. Do you think the guy in the uh, at the Dodgers game is him? No. <laughs> so, Doesn't look right. like him. He was a much. He was a. Uh, he, he had. He was much smaller in stature. I mean, unless he's been working out at the gym every day since he left in 1998, that's not him. 
All right, so, you know, why did we do this segment at all? I mean, you know, shucks. You Chuck got Nussie, really thank you. <laughs> it's a fascinating case, but not because the guy's running off, because that's well, not him, and I don't think he's going to be found. All right, Judd Burstein, thank you. It struck me as a, as a silly it. thing to do, but you asked me, so I said, okay. We did. We, appre we appreciate it. Look, there's a big podcast that's been suggesting that, that, that there's a big reveal here, and uh, maybe there's not. We're coming right back. Judd, thanks so much. Bless you.